Poe. We're very excited to have this panel, and we're also equally excited uh, that it will be introduced by uh, the, the Colombian Consul General, who's with us this morning, uh, Pedro Valencia. We'll say a few words. Welcome, Pedro. Well, good morning. Very pleased to be here. Dear distinguished guests and participants, film commissioners from Spain and the United Kingdom, as well as film commissioners from Broward and Miami-Dade counties, and indeed to the talented organizers of the Miami Media and Film Market, Patricia and Jose Luis, its board, and the president of Camaco, Joe. I'm excited as well as delighted to be here today as this conference reflects the best in the local and global culture. Thank you for including Colombia as a part of the year's MMFM. My country is a dynamic society of 50 million people, and we are the third largest Latin American trading partner of the US. That fact translates into a two-way trade in goods and services valued in almost 38 billion in 2021. US companies account for about 100,000 jobs in Colombia, and also it's noteworthy that Colombia goods exports to Florida reach an all-time high of 3.5 billion in 2021. Colombia and Florida have a two-way trade of around 6 billion in goods. Back to Colombia. The creative industries with its growth, growing importance to the Colombian economy generate almost 9 billion annually. That, that's about 3% of our national GDP. The reason why Colombia is an attractive destination for the creative sectors are several. Yes, we do have the obvious. Diverse geography, significant mountain ranges, long rivers, unique plant, and exotic beaches. But of course, we could never have achieved our current success without our industrious people who have built the creative ecosystems over many, many years. Today, in locations throughout Colombia, our universities are hard at work every day with our studios, software programmers, writers, and musicians to continue to develop advanced technical skills and technologies. And it has paid a significant dividend. We see an ever-expanding portfolio of foreign investment and interest in the sector. Netflix and Disney are some of the companies that have landed in our country. And the government has indeed recognized the importance of animation, film, and TV. That is a sophisticated industry that brings well-being and stability to our society. So it continues to support our creative industries through our globally competitive tax credits regime, as well as in international production treaties. According to the Colombian Field Commission, between 2012 and 2020, with the launch of our incentive program called FFC, and with the expansion of the scope of that mechanism called today SINA, we have had a total of 57 project release. 35 projects in production, 90 productions made for countries uh, and for the main platforms such as Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Disney, and Discovery, among others. 47 films such as American Made, Gemini Man, Mile 20, 22, sorry, Belleville Cop, and 33 series and 12 reality shows for more than 12 different countries. So it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic market and it's thriving right now. It is worth mentioning that during the filming of those productions, which have been successfully completed, Colombia has welcomed renowned actors and actresses such as Tom Cruise, Antonio Banderas, Will Smith, Javier Bardem, Penelope Cruz, and Daniel Radcliffe. As we look to the future, we believe that all these projects and their viability support the economic growth of Colombia and its people and reassure the fact that our country is ready to welcome the audiovisual production crews all year long. We hope to see you there, and you can reach through ProColombia whenever you need something. With this frame of reference, I am now honored to give the floor to the next panel title, Focus on Colombia. So I'll now turn over to Julio, Peter, Edino, Christopher, and Andy, who will introduce themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Sir, so we are here. This is Colombia. Uh, I was so excited again about this panel, and as you mentioned, our esteemed panelists, 
uh, without whom we could not have a panel. So thank you for being here as well. Uh, I'll start to my uh, far left. Julio Reyes Copelo, uh, he is the, the founder of a very interesting uh, institute. It's the Abbey Road Institute, originally from the UK, that you brought to Miami. Uh, in addition to that, you have a fully working recording studio here as well. Uh, and in addition to that, you are a nine-time Grammy and Latin Grammy Award winner with 15 Billboard chart-topping songs. Not a bad start, my friend. Can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Julio. Uh, and just to his right, uh, a gentleman who uh, we've gotten to know over the past couple of days. Uh, welcoming back Christopher Tuffin, who is the co-founder of Sentient Pictures International, uh, who's shot a couple of projects down in Colombia that we're excited to hear more about. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And uh, in our center here, we have Mr. Peter Lopez, who is the co-founder, CEO of Golden Bird Films, and iCartoons, uh, which has offices in both Miami and Bogota. And, of course, uh, Mr. Andy Schefter, uh, the other half of Sentient Pictures that's with us here today, uh, head of production at Sentient. So thanks for coming back, Andy. Really appreciate it. Uh, Adino couldn't be with us today. He's not feeling well. So um, we, will, we will go ahead and, and kick it off. So. Into it, uh, Peter, tell us a little bit more about your company, uh, what you do specifically, and sort of the collaboration between the teams in Miami and Colombia on the animation side. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting us to be here, and good morning, everybody. Uh, I think that we've been around, we started our cartoons in 2018, it's been four years, and uh, really because we met an incredible, talented uh, animator who is not here with me today. He came in from Mexico, but he's not feeling well and couldn't, he couldn't come. So he was staying with me, I said, stay home. But he's really the, uh, the expert in animation. But we saw so much talent in him that we said, okay, let's, we have Golden Bird Film, which is a, a, a production company. And then we said, let's go with iCartoons, and we started it. And the first project we did four years ago was um, uh, Piper and we sold it right away to Nickelodeon. We sold the IP, so we got a lot of funds for that, and it just was uh, uh, got sent because we were able then to do other IPs, and the company has been growing and growing, and now we're doing uh, service work for Paramount Plus and for Nickelodeon, and we did a, a movie for Televisa, so we're very grateful for what's happened in the four years, and it's been a lot of work, and. A lot of our crew is in Colombia, is mm. in Bogota. We have an office there of about 15, 16 people, and in Medellin. So a lot of the work that we do is in Colombia, Mexico, and Argentina. So it's more or less. Excellent. Thank you, Peter, for that. And now we will turn it over to uh, the music side. Yes. I'm going to assume you did the music to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, Julio, tell us a little bit about sort of, you know, you are Colombian, uh, but you're now based here in Miami. But let's just take a step back and, you know, sort of growing up in Colombia, what inspired you to pursue this in, uh, music industry? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much for the invitation. It's so good to have this, you know, uh, to have this community here in Miami. I think we've been waiting for this for a long time. Mm. So thank you very much. Um, I, I think we are in the business of creating uh, uh, parallel worlds, and especially those where you uh, really, you know, you, you want to create a, a reality that, that is lighter. You know, that's what we do. Mm. That's what, what, we, what we do with music. And uh, Colombia, and especially my generation, was, uh, I think we, we, we learned the hard way to, you know, to celebrate life uh, on, in, in adversity. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the, the, the DNA of, of, of what's happening in Colombia. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we, we learn how to celebrate life in, in, in every, every time, you know? And so we, we, we became like masters on creating those, those uh, that possibility to create, uh, yeah, to make, 
a reality liar. We, we are experts, we learn that the hard way, and I think that's been my, my motivation all, all my life. And I'm, I think I can speak for the generation of musicians that, that came to this country, and not only that, that came here, but the, that generation of musicians and artists in Colombia, and, and, and we are that, you know, we represent that, that passion for life because we were, we grew up in a very uh, difficult environment. Right. And that's why it's, it's very interesting and very intense to have, a, you know, a, the, the artistic uh, uh, feedback from, from, you know, from Colombian artists. Yeah, no, very well said. Yeah, and the, the contrast of, like you said, some of the suffering, but finding that celebration and that joy uh, and bringing that to the world so beautifully with your music. So that's fantastic. A maestro. So, uh, let's turn it over to your, our two American friends here uh, out of Los Angeles and, and Miami, uh, Chris and Andy. So, tell us just a little bit more about your general experiences and a little bit about your production company again and, and your work in Colombia. Certainly. Um, and I'll start with um, a little bit about our company for anybody who wasn't part of our panel uh, yesterday. Um, our company is Sentient Pictures International. Um, this, we actually began this, uh, this portion of our company during COVID um, when we felt that the over-reliance or the, or the over-expectation that streaming would completely dominate the landscape was, uh, uh, was a little hyperly preliminary. Um, and it turned out that that hedge that we made, I think, has been somewhat, you know, uh, somewhat true as the theatrical business has clawed itself back on a global basis, and I think it's found a lot more parity, and I think it will continue to find parity in the streaming space. Um, we had previously been a management and production company, historically the managers and producing partners for David Cronenberg, Pierre Morel, Shaker Kapoor, William Friedkin, Adam McGoyan. Um, in our agency days, that extended into um, Danny Boyle, Baz Luhrmann, Jean-Marc Vallée, uh, Robert Rodriguez, Guillermo del Toro, and over the course of 10 years, specifically with Cronenberg and Pierre Morel, as we put together films like uh, Maps of the Stars, Cosmopolis, A History of Violence, Dangerous Method, um, The Gunman, Peppermint, so on and so forth, we felt that it was um, time to kind of transition our business into being more true partners with the filmmakers that we managed so that we could help better guide them in the process, but also, you know, be mutually sh share the benefit, both creatively and financially, of the experience. Um, we brought on um, a number of executives from other companies who we sought to emulate the type of content that they were creating, uh, including Andrew Marcus, who had formerly been the COO at Relativity, um, uh, uh, Pascal Degault, former head of sales at Europa Corp, uh, and joining myself, uh, Pierre Morel, uh, the director of Taken, Renee Tab, my wife and partner, and Andy Schefter, who's been on and off my head of production over the course of the last 25 years. And in doing so, we built out 12 first look output deals within the first 12 to 18 months of the company, including Middle East, Greece, Turkey, India, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Russia, Eastern Europe, Latin America, Mexico, and Brazil. Um, so we have really transitioned ourselves into being not just a management company for writers and producers, including a large swath of, of Latin filmmakers, Colombian filmmakers such as Antonio Negrat, Mexican directors like Alejandro Monteverde uh, and, and the like, but also, again, being somebody that we can take their projects and put together their financing for them, their international sales for them, package the talent for them, and so on and so forth. Jumping to your second point of how our love affair with Columbia began, it was really for me, circa 2006, 2007, I had gone down to Cartagena with a good friend of mine and probably a good friend of many of yours, uh, Ben O'Dell, who used to work mm. with Jim McNamara at that time, right. and is now Eugenio Debez's partner at uh, Tupaz. And at that time, he was like, come with me down to my house in Cartagena and just fell in love with the country from there. Fast forward um, 10 years later, while I'm repping Alejandro Monteverde, we were putting together a film called Sound of Freedom with Jim Caviezel. Um, it was an ambitious project, full finance with full equity, and I think Fox Latin America had put a small MG on Latin America for it. And we had produced that at about $14, 15000000 million. And we're really just enamored by not just the quality of the crews, but also the 
openness, willingness of the government, of the military, of the local police, of all the different facets of the Colombian government and infrastru bureaucratic infrastructure to help grow and promote without limitation, without any censorship or over you know, ex examination of the material because that subject matter was about uh, child sex trafficking. It was something that you know, could certainly be something there. A lot of territories would have kind of an aversion to explore. And they just embraced it wholeheartedly and it just became a really incredibly positive experience. That led us leapfrogged into this past February where we shot Freelance with John Cena and Alison Brie and Colombian born and raised, I think soon to be megastar, Juan Pablo Raba. Mm -hmm. And we did that at $42 million gross with incredible participation from the military because we did C-130s, halo jumps, tank explosions, choppers, Sikorsky's, blowing up everything on the planet. And, <laughs> and, uh, and again, just the most amazing experience, shooting between um, uh, where we shot, um, I think, Bogota and uh, Girardot to, to emulate the jungles. So for us, that experience is now leapfrogged into our next film that's been coming to uh, Colombia, which is going to be Sombra, which again, starring Juan Pablo Raba, uh, Daniela Melchior coming off of Suicide Squad, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Fast and the Furious 10, uh, Isa Morales, uh, Jordana Brewster, directed by uh, Colombian Antonio Negrete, who I also manage. And uh, between those three films, that is about a... a uh, collective gross budgets of a close to nearing $100 million with about $50 million of that spend over the past five years in Colombia. So whereas um, you know, our, our, our contempt, our, our, you know, the, the, the studios that we, that, we, that we provide for in other places have brought a large swath of pictures, I think in terms of independent or international facing companies, I think that Sentia Pictures International has been, I think, one of the most proactive and, uh, and supportive partners of the Colombian film business, and we expect to continue that relationship going forward. Excellent. Excellent. So we'll turn it over to your counterpart. That, that was a great summary. Now I just need to do all that again in Spanish. Claro. Claro que sí. We'll let Andy do that. Um, so no, uh, Andy. So digging a little bit more in terms of you know why choosing Colombia. Uh, you know, was it story driven? Were these create or were there obviously uh, incentives at play? And just sort of you know give us like a, the bird's eye view of you know what makes Colombia an attractive destination to shoot some of those projects that Chris mentioned. Well, I think it's hard to follow up that. Well, I you know for Sombra that we're getting ready to do now. Um, it's location based. It's a true crime story based on a, a police dog, drug dog uh, named Sombra, who was so good at his job that the cartels put a hit out on him. Wow. And after all his successes, he ended up in, in the U.S. under the Witness Protection Program. I'll actually, the dog I'll actually clarify that the dog was a, is, is a female. Yes, <laughs> it's a female dog. Okay. Yes. Um, Diversity. So, so that was that. The, the, our next one is is very you know it's it's location based. Freelance was based on a fictional Latin American country, and it it could have been anywhere. And we actually even at one point, you know, Colombia is a popular location destination right now for motion pictures and episodic television. Right. A lot of the large production companies in Colombia are working at capacity. Okay. So freelance ramped up very, very quickly. Um, and when it did, we reached out to uh, three different companies there that are our counterparts that we've worked with in the past and, and have uh, relationships with. And they were at capacity and didn't think they could do it. So we scouted the Canary Islands, right? And so this gets into the tax credit angle where films are always looking at what they can net out of tax credits to make their budget, right? right. So literally, I think Pierre got off the plane in, in the Canary Islands and like literally got off the plane, the wind hit him and he looked around and was like, no, this is not, I mean like instantly, but we went ahead with the scout anyway for political purposes. Right. Right. So we started talking to other production companies that we also had relationships with in Colombia, but we were concerned that they didn't, they had never done a picture at this level, at this budget, the amount of explosions and crashes and whatnot. And so there was a little concern there. 
but we were able to work a deal out and bring in a, a bondable line producer from the states, and everything was 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 made whole, so that it was we were able to accomplish it. The tax credit in Colombia is as good as any tax credit on the planet. It it is fairly straightforward. Reads like a lot of you know the other ones on what qualifies and what doesn't. It's your you know in country spend and and on essentially residence and what's there. So. It, it, you can go in and if you have to qualify, you have to be approved, um, you have to set up a fiduciary bank account to put your money into, right, mm -hmm. so that it can be tracked through that account. So there's, you know, there are complexities to it, but you can go in feeling confident that you're going to get that money later, right? This mm -hmm. is something that a lot of people don't talk about because mo you know most of the time here in the states we're talking about US states and we, we feel confidence the banks feel confidence that they're going to be able to actually get that credit back there are countries around the world that banks will not lend on their tax credits because they don't know for sure wow. if they're going to get back so i mean there are times where somebody will come to us and say we really want to shoot here and we're kind of like that's not their their tax credit's not bankable we can't you know right. we can't do it so, you know, combining these things with the quality of crew, their, their crew is getting deeper by the day. The more films and episodic shows, and, and he, the general counsel was correct in that it's, it's Amazon, it's Netflix, it's Apple. These are not small things that are shooting there. These are big budget things. There's a show called Longboard that filmed uh, last year. They spent months in Atlanta, and then they moved to Columbia. Right. right? Huge show. Um, and so the crew is getting deeper, the amount of equipment is getting greater as they build their industry. They're doing it right with their tax credit. They're focused on the growth of the industry. And like Chris said, the government has been behind this 100%. Our next film, Sombra, I'm not sure we could make it in the way that we need to make it without the government's participation because it has there's so much with the the, the dogs and the canine training and the military and again there's helicopters and explosions right. and things like that we really need their support and they are there for us mm. um, in in you know an, in really incredible proactive way that you know you can get that kind of support in the US but it's hard the the bureaucracy is way deeper um, and I, I think it, it just shows a willingness and a recognition of the industry as something that can grow the country's economy while also raising the visibility of the company worldwide right so I mean I, I think it's just it's it's a, it's a really good thing and if you think of it as just I mean, I, you know, in, in my head now, I think of it as like the 51st state. Right. right. And, 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 wow. and honestly, and, huh. and it, it, I know so many people that are interested in going there and a few people actually that, that, that haven't gone there because they're so at capacity. Right. right? So we, we went through for our next film, I think our three main production companies that we had long standing relationships with. And, you know, maybe spent a couple of weeks to a month with each one of them for this next film. And they literally came back to us and were like, you know, Andy, Chris, we, we can't do this movie, right? We're so busy with this Apple show and this Netflix movie that we feel we take this third thing on, we won't be able to deliver, wow. right? And, and that's something you don't always hear from a production company, right? Mm. They're being completely straightforward and saying, you know, we're not going to deliver we're not going to deliver the level of service that we expect to deliver to you. Wow. So we don't want to do it. That's, there are so many com companies here in the States that would just say yes right. because they want to take the money. Yeah. And then your movie's not going to be good because you're going to get low-end crew. The, you know, you'll be the third-tier movie on their, their list, and they, mm. won't, they won't be able to, to, to give you that same kind of energy level, dedication, and focus that they would. Um, and that was that was super reassuring, right? That, yeah. that people were saying, no, I, you know, we can't we can't do this just due to capacity. Yeah. Um, we love the company that we're with right now. It's a company called 64A Films. 
Um, this is going to film a little bit bigger than the stuff they've done, but that was kind of like with freelance. Right. For us and them, it's a symbiotic relationship where it will raise the budgets of, of what they're doing. Mm. Um, while at the same, you know, it's kind of like, I, you know, it's a totally different country, but like when I did a movie in Canada like 20 years ago, and we were constantly helping their crew raise their level to like that LA studio y kind of level of expectation right. or what kind and I hate to say this of the kind of paperwork you have to deliver. Sure. Right? Not <laughs> no, I'm not talking about just the filmic quality, but like the, the back end. Because again, so much of production these days this is incentive driven that, you know, the, the the paperwork and the tracking of the financing is incredible. It is down to the last penny. Hmm. So when you hear stories about, you know, producers taking all this money and, oh, they did this and they did that, other than giant studio films, that stuff doesn't really happen that much because everything is so tracked and budgets are crushed to the, like, this is, this is right. as tiny as it can be and we still deliver the the project um so it just doesn't it's not something that happens right but we see beyond sombra we see a future in colombia i mean we're we've already got one or two projects we're kind of fishing around like mm, can we make this happen there wow right? well, that's that's so. that's a that's a good plug absolutely uh so i want to turn over to to peter and then back to julio uh peter sort of on the animation do you find similar like you know a lot of the the talent there is at capacity that they're busy then and, and the level of sort of quality that you've come to see from that country in particular um yeah we just uh, applied for um a, a concurso it was um uh, How would you say that in English? I forgot. Concurso? Uh, competition. That's it. And contest for the lay. Ocho Catorce was a lay, a law A14 that was established, I think, 2003. And every year they, they let all the people from Colombia put on projects and then they choose a couple of them and they pay for the whole thing. So, so we applied this year and we won the contest and oh, we're wow. doing one animation pilot. Cool. Uh, we're doing it in Colombia with people from there in 2D, and we've experienced that there's a, it's a growing industry in animation. Hmm. Uh, it's growing fast, and, and the good thing is, it's, what you were saying before, it's a, a challenge, because in order to do animation there and, and to apply for the credits, there is a lot of paperwork, a lot hmm. of administration, but there's also a lot of help. Right. from the, 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 the community and from the people involved. So we're happy to, I think that there is, it's a growing industry. Uh, we hope they get a little bit better in 3D, okay. but we're working with 2D, we're, we're happy. And, and we've been working in Colombia with Discovery since two, uh, for 10 years. Mm. And, and the diversity and the culture and, and, the, and, and everything in the country, right. it's beautiful to film there. And, it, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of talented technical people. Sure. So, you know, it's, for me, when they tell me, let's go to Bogotá, let's go to Medellín, it's always, uh, yes, I'm ready, I'm packed. You yeah. know? It's a great place to film. Pedro, your, your country is uh, it's beautiful, and it's growing, and yeah. we hope to keep going back there, you know, and we love it, we love yeah. it. No, very well said, Peter. Uh, interject real quick. Um, there are a lot of American and Canadian 3D and VFX companies that have all have satellite offices yes. in Bogota and Medellin now. And they are taking some of the work that they are contracting in North America and moving it to Bogota. Oh, wow. So, no, but this is a great conversation. I want to segue over to Julio because I think, and we've heard uh, from our friends from Spain and the UK yesterday uh, who also, as they've described, amazing tax credits and facilities and creative talent. But it's, it's a two-way street, right? So we heard from Adrian uh, when he did his 100 years of the Motion Picture Association in the UK is you know, I think the strength of a country and its creative industry is not only the talent that they're able to lure in, but what they export out into the world. And I think Julio is an example of that in building your studio and your academy here in Miami. So talk a little bit about your work here in Miami as a Colombian and now, you know, just taking that spirit and that, that celebration here to the hometown. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we are very, very, very passionate people. As, as you guys <laughs> can tell when you go there. 
uh, for the same reason. We, yeah, we, we celebrate life, and that's, that's been a, a great motivator. Uh, I'm super proud that, uh, that I brought the, uh, the first Abbey Road Institute uh, into America. And I'm creating a, a new model of education based more on, on mentorship. Uh, it's a very boutique school under the umbrella of uh, my studio, which is called Art House. And uh, it's been a great, great experience. I've been able to share this, this passion and to create, uh, to close this uh, enormous gap that is between academy and reality. Right. Because actually the, the students uh, are able to to learn from you know from from reality from what's mm -hmm. happening. My studios at Rella on the studio where a lot of artists are coming, and these kids are having the opportunity to to be uh, with them and almost like experience that the super I call it the supernatural side of education, which is to learn uh, by sharing the same space with an artist. That's something you don't get in the traditional school. Right. So it's been it's been really really a, a rewarding and an amazing experience. Oh yeah, that's that's incredible. And, and we've actually talked about that a little bit. And Peter was on the tour of Miami Dade College's Magic, which runs their animation school like a mini animation studio, like a Pixar. Right. Uh, and the idea of becoming so practical in, and like you said, taking it out of the world of theory and academic uh, and really getting these kids immersed in the professional world while they're learning. I think that's brilliant. And, exactly. Yeah. 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 And all those kids, for example, last year, uh, sessions uh, with JLO, with Will Smith, Will Smith uh, a lot of artists that went to the studio and these kids had the opportunity to assist and wow. to learn, you know, just by watching and learning. <laughs> What they can say, what they should, you know, is that aspect that you don't learn in the, in the traditional classroom. Yeah, yeah. Well, what better teacher than J-Lo, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's amazing. So we're very excited. Uh, we have run out of time, unfortunately. We have to get to our next panel, but I want to thank all of you so much again for, for your participation. Uh,